Hey there, sister. Welcome to the Social Media for Mompreneurs podcast. I'm your host, Allison Scholes, and I am on a mission to help mompreneurs like you ditch the Instagram overwhelm and take control of your time on the app and build an extraordinary brand and business, but still be fully present with your family and just be crazy happy with your life. This show is filled with Instagram strategies, marketing hacks, branding and business tips with a side of coffee and Jesus. If you're ready for some juicy content, you know what to do. Hand your kiddos those tablets, open those juice boxes, grab your coffee, whiskey or wine, and let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode. And yes, it is time for a quick tip Tuesday. And today I am really excited to share this topic. It's one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about content, but I'm going to talk about the number one way to save time when creating Instagram content. Lately, I feel that there's this new cloud hanging over Instagram land, and I'm going to call this cloud content comparison. I have this feeling that a lot of people are just watching all the content that people are putting out there and they're like, oh, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. Well, my content is not as good. How is this person creating so much content? And people are spinning their wheels and they're getting overwhelmed. And then the comparisonitis kicks in. And there's also this battle. There's a battle between quality content and quantity content. And you're going to hear both sides of the story from so many different marketing experts or coaches out there, some will say you only need to be putting out quality content and that's less posts per week. And then there's going to be other coaches and marketing experts that are to say, no, if you want to grow on Instagram, well, you need to be putting out a lot of content and just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. You're going to hear both sides. And I'm here to tell you today, uh, you need to do what feels right to you. Again, I'm all about sustainability. What is going to work for you in the long run? So if you're like, yeah, I can crank out content. I'm going to post six to seven days a week. It's sustainable. I totally got this. Then you do you. And if you're like, no, I only want to post three to four days a week. And I want to make sure that I'm really like in my zone of genius and put out quality content. Then you do that. There is not a one size fits all. I always say this. Um, Instagram is not a one size fits all, right? Neither are pants. Let's talk. We won't even get into that discussion about women in pants, right? And, and I think I put a post about that a while back, so you can check that out on Instagram. So, what should you be doing to save time when you're creating Instagram content? Here you go. Here's the number one way: use your Instagram insights or your analytics to repurpose your best content. And why should you be doing this? Your insights or your analytics or your metrics, whatever you want to call it, it shows you what content your audience likes or what they are consuming. So why get on that hamster wheel and reinvent content over and over? You do not need to be doing that. You just need to take a look at your insights or your analytics and see What is already working? What does your audience already love that you're putting out there? We're going to repurpose that content. So there are two ways to look at your metrics. The first way is using the Meta Business Suite, and this is through Facebook. And if you don't know what I'm talking about it, yes, you already have it. Most likely you already have a Facebook business page. And if you do, you have the Meta Business Suite. All you have to do is log in and go to the insight section. And that is where you're going to be able to set your date parameters. And I recommend if you're going to use the meta business suite through Facebook, when you go to kind of look at your analytics, I would set it for Instagram posts only. Because a quick reminder, the meta business suite is set up a little differently from Instagram. So if you are currently sharing your Instagram reels to your news feed, the Meta Business Suite will calculate the post and the reels together in the analytics. And right now we know that reels are working. So when you go to look at the analytics, most likely the reels are all going to jump up to the top. So it's going to be really hard to kind of look at just what 
post that you're creating for your newsfeed, what's working. So set it for Instagram post only. Now, the other way that you can look at your metrics is through the Instagram app, going to your insights. I prefer this method, but you will be on your phone. What I like about the Meta Business Suite is you can look at it on your desktop, just makes it a little easier. But I recommend the Instagram app for looking at your insights. Why I like it? Because it separates your post from your reels from your stories. So I can just take a look at my Instagram post and it kind of makes it look like your newsfeed when you're looking at it. Now, here's what you're going to look at. So for example, let's say you have your Instagram insights open and underneath your audience, you're going to see a section that says content you've shared. That is the section where you're going to go to. And it's going to automatically generate for the past year. So let's just look at the past year. These are three things that you should be looking at. I want you to be looking at the post which received the highest reach, and then the most saves and the most shares. Look at it for the last year. And then you also want to look at it for the last three months, the most recent post that you've put out there. Again, you want to look at which post received the highest reach, the most saves, and the most shares. When you are in each of those sections, I want you to focus on the top six to nine posts. Take note on what types of posts populated to the top. Were they carousels? Were they quotes? Were they videos? And then kind of take a look at the content. Was it educational? Was it inspiring? Or was it entertaining? Do you notice any patterns or any similarities across the reach or the saves or the shares, any similarities from the past year to the past three months? You are going to use this data to, guess what, repurpose your best performing post because your your audience already likes it. So now that you have kind of three sections, you're looking at your reach, you're looking at your saves, and you're looking at your shares. So now you get to kind of decide what content you will repurpose. So I'll break this down for you. If you are really trying to get more visibility on your account, then I would repurpose posts from your reach section. But if you're like, I want to get more likes and I want to expand to a new audience, then you want to repost the, or I'm sorry, you want to repurpose the posts that are getting the shares because those are the people that are sharing your post to their stories. And now their audience, that's a new audience, is seeing your post. So if you're looking for a new audience, focus on the shares. And then if you want to build trust and credibility with your audience, then repurpose posts from your saves because they are saving that content. That means that they really like their that content and they're going to go back to it to learn from you or, you know, try to implement something that you've taught them. Now, here are a couple of ideas when it comes to repurposing your content. Let's take, for example, that you had an infographic that got a really high reach for the past three months. That infographic maybe even got some saves and shares. That is telling you that your audience really liked that content You can take that content that's in the caption and really you can do a copy and paste and maybe tweak it a little bit. But let's say, for example, you had an infographic that you created in Canva with some great content. Why don't you repurpose it as a carousel? Create a carousel from it. Do a reel or just have a static image. You're taking the same content and you're just tweaking it. And guess what? Your audience is not going to know. I repurpose content all the time, and my audience doesn't really know that I'm taking a post from three months ago, maybe it's a carousel, and then the next month I'm going to tweak it into a reel, or I might create an infographic from it. Your audience will not know what content you're repurposing because they are just too busy with their own lives. So don't be afraid to repurpose your content. Let's say you have a quote that got shared so many times. I would take that quote and I would tweak it or repurpose it as a meme, maybe do a reel or do a static image. Let's say you had a reel that 
got a lot of saves or a lot of shares or just a lot of views, you could take that reel and you can just pull a quote from it or create a meme or just do a static image and take copy and paste the caption, tweak it a little bit, and now you have a brand new post. But when we repurpose our content, guess what? We're not spending a lot of time creating brand new content. You're not back back on that hamster wheel and sitting at your computer and spending hours upon hours creating content. Because if you do that month after month, you're going to burn out and then you are going to give up on Instagram and you're going to miss out on what Instagram is all about. It's always been about creating relationships and building community and it's still is that today. I know you have this feeling of what I call content comparison, but don't get trapped in that. Use the content that you are already putting out there in the world and it's already working and tweak it and put it out there again. Now, I know a lot of you still might be feeling that you are just posting random content and you have a lack of content ideas. You really have no strategy to when it comes to showing up on Instagram Maybe your engagement is like in the tank and you feel like you're scrolling Instagram like it's your full time job. I invite you to join the Insta Accelerator Academy. This is a membership academy that gives you monthly trainings that you can take at your own pace and monthly coaching, plus caption templates. And currently there are over 100 caption templates in the vault. And there are Canva templates for Instagram posts and stories. And guest experts come in every month to help you scale your business and grow your bank account. Here's the best part. Right now, it's only $37 a month. That's less than a mani-pedi. So if you're ready to take control over the time you spend on Instagram, but still crank out content like a queen, this academy is for you. So what are you waiting for? Join today and I'll see you inside. Head to bossladingsweatpants.com. And don't forget, stay sassy, sparkle, and wear sweatpants. I can't thank you enough for listening today and supporting this show. The best way to support me and grow the podcast is by leaving a written review on Apple iTunes. I promise you, I read every review and take them to heart. And don't forget, head to bossladyinsweatpants.com to grab all my freebies or hang out with me on Instagram at Allison Scholes. I'll see you soon.